lot of attention, on which is concerning the seat of the European Parliament, quite clear that uh, the question should come. There is an overwhelming majority of members of the European Parliament in favour of one seat. We have one seat, that's Strasbourg, but we have two working places and uh, our colleagues want to uh, bring seat and working place to one place. So this is uh, quite clear. But uh, in the treaty is foreseen that the decision about the seats of the institutions is in the hands not of the parliament, it is in the hands of the governments. I'm often astonished that especially those colleagues who insist that the governments in Europe have the priority in this question give the priority to the European Parliament. This is, but okay, uh, I take only note uh, about that. Uh, I'm in favor of one seat, Strasbourg or Brussels. One seat should uh, be the seat of the European Parliament. And uh, it is up to the governments to decide about this. Uh, I, I'm now in the follow-up of this decision, will logically speak to the Council, to the European uh, Council of Heads of State and Government about the decision, and then I will see. You need a unanimous vote. And there are some governments, I think the Dutch government as well, which, which uh, uh, has decided to ask for a treaty change for this. But if the Dutch government wants uh, to, to see a treaty change, it's up to the Dutch government to ask for a treaty change. So uh, we will see. The, no, it was the, it was the UK government, you are right. The UK government had in the coalition agreement between the Lib Dems and the Tories as such a uh, formulation. But there was no initiative taken until today. Misschien mag ik er heel even op ingaan, want kijk, het, het Europees parlement heeft eigenlijk opgeroepen tot zo'n initiatief. En meerdere regeringen zijn bang voor een verdragswijziging. Maar het zou goed zijn als het EP in ieder geval lidstaten dwingt zich uit te spreken. Ja. Zodat het hele volk kan zien waar ze in dit opzicht staan. Ja, mevrouw Strik. Uh, mevrouw Strik, uh, every month. Every month. And I can tell you, uh, as a group chairman uh, in the past, of the chairman of the Social Democratic Group in the European Parliament, I took the initiative already in 2006. I asked the acting president in this time, and what the Austrian Chancellor uh, Schüssel, to ask all the governments if they are prepared to, treat, to, to change the treaty. We had in this time a majority to ask the president of the parliament, Borrell, to take the initiative with the governments. And the answer of 25 governments on the request of the European Parliament for one seat was no. So you must take into account that in the end, France and Luxembourg, and I think also other governments, will not agree, because you must change the protocol 11, 16. I think 16, is the pro or six, I, I don't remember the, the figure of the protocol in which the seat of the institution is fixed. Seat of the European Parliament, seat of the European Commission, seat of Europol, Den Haag, seat of uh, the European Court, Luxembourg, etc. And you must open the whole thing. And you can imagine that uh, there is a lot of uh, different countries with a lot of different interests uh, looking to this protocol. So it's not as easy. But I repeat once more, the will of the European Parliament is quite clear. I think we must reform the internal working method of the European Parliament, quite sure. We have 750 members from 28 countries representing, represented in seven, perhaps soon eight, parliamentarian groups and uh, around 30 non-attached members. Representing, I don't remember the figure exactly, but more than 200 parties. This is quite clear that we have to reform also our own uh, working method. But I can tell you, and I think uh, the president of your own parliament uh, will uh, agree to reform a parliament uh, and the working method of a parliament is perhaps the biggest challenge uh, in political life. So difficult, but you are right, I agree with you, we have to reform it. And uh, Mr. De Lange, I, I must ask you to repeat the, your last question. Uh, the, the well, <coughs> ik uh, drukte me zorgen uit over uh, 
De austerity measures ah, de waar in Europa de onder leidt. Uh, u noemde uh, dat een van de prioriteiten van Europa zou moeten zijn om de massawerkloosheid met name onder de jeugd te bestrijden. Die in landen als Griekenland, uh, Spanje uh, boven de 50% is. Uh, ik Jongen, denk uh, dat dat uh, vooral veel retoriek is waar ik in de praktijk weinig actie op zie. En uh, het zou wel eens zo kunnen zijn dat uh, het star vasthouden aan de 3% norm, dat dat een van de problemen is, liever dan een van de oplossingen. En daar wilde ik graag uw mening over horen. Ja, ik zei op jou, er is no single answer to uh, this uh, economic problems. Uh, what we need is a kind of policy mix. Uh, we need structural reforms, we need strategic investment in growth. We need regional development and we need especially the fight against unemployment of young people, which is in some of the regions of in southern Europe, but not only there, in other regions as well, destroying the social cohesion of a whole society. So entirely uh, d'accord. We uh, negotiated uh, very intensively this uh, multi-annual financial framework and I think we should use really uh, the European money very targeted and uh, focused on regional development, but the most important item in my eyes to overcome the crisis is the credit crunch for small and middle enterprises. We have uh, a lot of work to do in some of the member states of the European Union in crisis, but uh, if I discuss with uh, uh, representatives of the economic sector in the country, I get always the same message. The small and middle enterprises are those who create most of the new jobs have one common problem. They have no access to credits. So to overcome the credit crunch by also uh, credit programs of the European Investment Bank, for example, is one of the tools uh, in this frame of a policy mix we need.